Hi guys, welcome to Diversity of Urban Art. I'm David Sandage here at International Hot Glass at the Artagon Marketplace. Today we're going to blow some glass using a technique, an ancient technique called lamp working. I began my lamp working career, oh, just about 35 years ago at the age of 15. It was an after school job and I've been doing it ever since and haven't looked back. I've spent my career blowing glass all over the world for the last 20 years, blowing glass at Walt Disney World, but not just here in Orlando, Florida. I worked in Disneyland Paris, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and California. Not to mention traveling the United States, teaching and demonstrating glass blowing to glass blowing students all over. So let's just go ahead and get started. I'm gonna make a horse today, and we're gonna use this torch. This torch puts out a flame that burns at about, just about 3,000 degrees, and we're gonna be melting glass rods. Glass rods are made of what's called borosilicate glass. It's a type of glass that is not very susceptible to thermal shock, and it allows us to do a lot of very detailed sculpting. So the horse's body is gonna be made of this transparent black, and I'm gonna speckle it with some white glass that's been crushed into a very fine powder with some little chunks in it and then some opaque glass black glass for the mane and the tail this piece is going to take approximately 20 to 25 minutes to make and i hope you enjoy i'll wear these glasses they're called didymium glasses the type of lens is a filter it'll filter the bright light out of the flame so i, I don't blind myself the torch burns natural gas and oxygen. So I just want to adjust it by adding a little bit of oxygen, a little bit of natural gas until I get the flame just the way I want. This is a very diverse torch. It allows me to do all kinds of detailed work by just bringing the flame down to, to a small point or a big bushy flame for heating larger pieces. So I've preheated the end of my glass rod in a little oven here. I'm gonna wipe some of the dust off and we'll get started. I'm gonna start with the body of the horse. It takes a little bit of prep work before it starts to take its shape and form. As the glass heats up, it changes color. It starts glowing very bright red. That's the color of energy. And it becomes soft and molten the hotter it gets. At the point where it becomes soft enough and the surface is very tacky or gooey, I can roll it into the white glass and it'll pick up on the surface some of the color. And as I reheat it, all that white will blend in smooth. I want to get some more length with more of the white on it. The really interesting thing about glass is that unlike metal, glass is an insulator, whereas metal is a conductor of energy, meaning that the heat doesn't transfer, it doesn't travel down the glass rod into my hand. So where I'm holding the glass rod doesn't get hot at all. Okay, now I've covered it in the white spots. I'm going to begin to shape the body of the horse. So as the glass gets hot and molten, it'll start to gather on itself. If I hold the glass rod down at this lower angle, gravity will pull the glass down into it. And you'll start to see the end of this rod get larger. It's just building up on itself.
Okay, that's the beginning of a horse's body. That's actually the horse's butt. This is my favorite tool in my tool bag. I took it from my mother's kitchen cabinet about 30 years ago. And this black rod will be attached to the end of the, the body of the horse and later it will be shaped and formed into the tail of the horse. But for now, I'm just going to attach it right there and use that as a holding rod so that I can continue on to shape further on the body of the horse. So now I'm heating up more length of glass and I'm going to begin to push it together so the glass builds up which will be the center section or the belly and back of the horse. And once I've reached the, the size and shape that I want, I'll move further down the rod again to make the neck and chest area. Again, building up the glass just by pushing it together as it becomes molten. I want to do a little bit more shaping on this. I'm going to use this graphite marver that's attached to my torch. It's called a marver back in the old days marble was used and marver is a Latin word for marver. So I'm just rolling the glass back and forth, flattens it out a little bit. And as I pull the glass stretches out and begins to taper down the end of the neck and that is the spot where I will add more glass and make the horse's head. So I always want to go back and clean the ends of my rods off, tweezers, just pinch some of the glass off and discard it. And now I will make the back legs of the horse. I always have to keep the glass hot throughout the whole process. If I let it cool down and I go back on it, it can crack. So while I'm heating this rod to use for adding to the body, I'm continuing to keep the body of it warm just by soaking it around in the flame. And once again, I want to pick up some more of the white glass. And then I'll just add this bit of glass to the rear end of the horse. And that is the upper upper thigh area of the horse and I'll do that again symmetrically right next to it. And then I'll continue on with the lower end of the back legs. Just 
down to the ankles. And once again, I don't want the body to cool off any, so I'm going back into the flame just to rewarm it. And back to a little bit more of the black glass, I'll use the opaque black for the hooves. And this gets detailed, so I'm going to bring my flame down a little bit so I don't need to heat quite so much glass. Shaping the end of the rod into a more of a point. flatten out the bottom of the hoof. All right, so there's the rear half of the horse complete. And I'll continue on moving forward. I'll do the front legs. Once again, always going back to reheat the piece and let it soak up the heat all the way through to the core. Okay, so now I'll add another bit of glass to the chest area to shape the, the shoulders of the horse. And we're going to pick up some more white glass. Continue on with the legs. Up to the knee joint. And then for the left leg. Okay, now I'll finish it off once again with the hooves and the black glass. So now I think you can see that the horse is beginning to take shape. We'll put a head on it. Now I want to thin this glass out just a little bit. The diameter of the rod is just a bit thicker than what I need. So I'll let gravity stretch it out some. And I'll pick up some more white glass. You can see the jowls of the horse head. 
And I'll pull this out into the nose. Then we get a mouth in there. Very fine detail. Some nostrils. Well, that's the eye sockets. some pupils into it using the red glass. This red glass is very interesting as it heats up it goes clear and then after it cools the color comes back to it later. So just a very small dot of glass press it into the head All right, there's the head. So I'm going to go back and reheat the whole body once again. I want to get the core temperature, the core heat going all the way through and through. So I'll just bathe the whole thing until it gets a nice red glow to it. All the way back into the rear of the horse. Okay, and then I'm going to just reshape the neck a little bit, give it a little bit of motion and character. And for the horse's mane. Back to the opaque black glass. So I'll just stripe a little bit of glass on, layer upon layer. And then for the ears. All right, so now the body of the horse and everything has been shaped and formed, and I'll finish it off with the tail. Going back to black rod that I attached to the butt of the horse, and I'll hold it with these they're just basically salad tongs that have been wrapped in Kevlar. The Kevlar keeps the metal from scratching and shocking the glass. So I'm just kind of lapping the glass over onto itself. One more. Gives it the appearance of flowing horse hair. And this horse was made to stand up in the rearing pose. So it stands on its back legs and its tail. And there we are. So after the piece is done, it has to go into an oven for a very slow cooling process. This is called the annealing oven. And it allows all the stresses to be released from the glass. So the temperature will just drop down very slowly overnight and it'll come out in the morning. So there's my horse demonstration, lamp working glass. It was named lamp working back in the days before torches and compressed gases. 
glass blowers would use glass rods that were pulled out of a furnace and an oil lamp with a bellows attached. So you could pump the bellows with your feet to superheat the flame that would then melt the glass. Nowadays, with these modern torches and compressed gases, a lot of people refer to it as torch work, but you know, I'm a traditionalist, lamp working is what I call it. So thank you very much. Thanks for spending time watching our podcast, Diversity of Urban Art at with International Hot Glass at Artigan Marketplace. Thanks.